every now and then I take on an absolutely ridiculous video suggestion that takes about three weeks to write and research, they almost kill me, and I swear never to be stupid enough to take on one again. And then about a month later, I fall foul of that quote so often misattributed to Albert Einstein of doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. Misattributed, I should add, because there's no evidence Einstein ever said such a thing. Anyhow, the point is that I'm an idiot and I've done another mammoth video for you all today. I will have to be terse with many of the players in this list so as to prevent the video from being ridiculously long, for which I apologise. I should also make it absolutely clear that I'm only looking at the definitive year in which a player retired from playing football. If a player retired and then came out of retirement three years later for just one game, a la Tom Finney, that later date would still constitute their retirement day rather than the earlier one. Similarly, a player might play their final game in say 1987, but not officially retire until 1991, in which case we are still going with the later date. The cases in which it gets really tricky is when a player is retired, but then plays some non-legal amateur football later on. In those cases, I've just had to use some common sense, but typically, anything outside of or below the 6th or 7th tiers of a National League system can be disregarded. Entries are based on how good the player was over the course of their entire career, not at the time of retirement. Here is the best footballer to retire every year from 1960 to 2019 in the opinion of this humble YouTube sensation. 1960, Nat Lofthouse. The Lion of Vienna gets us off to a powerful start, seeing off the likes of Ivo Brodis and Gino Bozanski for the year 1960. A one-club man who spent his entire career at Bolton Wanderers, Nat Lofthouse, was half man, half machine. Renowned for his relentless work ethic, bravery and determination, he scored 30 goals from 33 caps for England and retired in 1960 34. 1961, Jose Manuel Moreno. A man who came 14th in my list of the 100 greatest footballers of all time, <clears throat> another video that almost killed me, Jose Manuel Moreno was the best player in South America and quite probably the world during the late 1930s and 40s. Argentinians of a certain vintage maintain that this maverick footballing genius was better than any who have followed, including Diego Maradona and Lionel Messi. Moreno hung up his boots in 1961 at the grand old age of 44. 1962. Jozef Bozic. I surely have to plug my recently published book here, which was in Amazon's top 10 football books at one point, although if you're based in the UK, you're far better off buying the hard copy from www.englandsgreatestdefender.com, since Neil Franklin is undoubtedly the second best player to have retired in 1962. Incredibly though, one man beats him, and that man came 24th in my list of all-time goats. Jozef Bozic is one of the greatest midfield players to have ever lived, and after more than a decade as perhaps the most important player of Hungary's golden generation, Bozic retired in 1962 at the age of 37. 1963. Ernst Stockwork. Nicknamed Clockwork by the British press due to the way in which he made Austria tick, Ernst Stockwork was a class act with fantastic stamina, technique and range of passing. He starred for Sampdoria in Serie A, but returned to Austria Vienna for the final years of his career, retiring with the club in 1963, also aged 37. 1964. Nilton Santos. One of the finest and almost undoubtedly the most influential fullback of all time, Nilton Santos, was the first truly world class attack minded fullback. His adventure and intent on the left flank, to win with Jama Santos, no relation, a right back, were crucial in inspiring Brazil to glory at both the 1958 and 1962 World Cups. Before his death in 2013, Santos said he didn't envy today's footballers for the money they made, just the freedom that they had to go forward. 1965. Stanley Matthews. Nilton Santos was one of the greatest left backs of all time, but Stanley Matthews still had him on toast in his 40s when England faced Brazil. An unbelievable athlete and technician, Matthews was the finest player of his generation, and one of the finest to have ever lived. He retired in 1965, still as a top flight footballer, at the remarkable age of 50. 1966. Alfredo Di Stefano. The year in which England won the World Cup was a strong one for retirees, with Brazilian legend Gigia, Hungarian great Ferenc Pushkas, and the majestic Alfredo Di Stefano all calling time on their playing careers that year. All three are legends of the game, but Stefano is the most complete footballer to have ever lived, and even up against such esteemed competition, there was never really any doubts about his inclusion. He had just turned 40 when he called it a day, playing for Espanyol at the time. 1967. Laszlo Kubala. 
Hungary was such powerhouses in the 1950s that it should come as no surprise to see a few of their players crop up as 1960s retirees early in this list. Laszlo Kubala actually missed out on his country's golden generation since he left Hungary to join Barcelona in 1951. Up until the arrival of Lionel Messi, a compelling case could be made for Kubala being Barcelona's greatest ever player. A fantastic all-round striker, he retired in 1967 whilst playing for Toronto Falcons in Canada. 1968. Dida. Of all the years prior to the 2000s, this was the one that I found the most challenging. So challenging, in fact, that I asked some of you guys for your suggestions on Twitter. Prolific Bulgaria legend Ivan Kolov was my best shout, Lennart Skogland was a great call, as too was Dino Sani. The best of the bunch as far as I was concerned though, had to be Dida. A fantastic second striker, who starred predominantly for Flamengo and won the World Cup with Brazil in 1958, he retired in Colombia in 1968. 1969. Omar Savori. Right. I'm already going to have to start speeding things up since I'm rambling on too much. Omar Savori was a fantastic diminutive Argentine-born Italian international who scored prolifically for River Plate, Juventus and Napoli. 1970. Lev Yashin. Into the 1970s and onto the greatest goalkeeper of all time. Lev Yashin revolutionised the goalkeeping position, particularly in Europe, and spent his entire 20-year career at Dynamo Moscow. 1971. John Charles. The gentle giant, John Charles is the only man to make a World eleven in two different positions, as a centre-half and as a centre-forward. Despite his large stature, Charles was a footballer in the purest sense of the term. It could be argued that he retired in 1974, but we think he was playing at too low a level after 1971 to count those three years, and he made this list either way. 1972. Mario Kaluna. A great big honourable mention must go to Kurt Hamrin, who is one of the finest wide players this sport has ever seen, but my choice for 1972 is Mario Kaluna. A tireless midfield dynamo who could do it all, it so often looked like men against boys, when Kaluna was on the pitch. 1973. Garincha. The bow-legged genius, like so many geniuses, Garincha had his flaws. Fatal flaws, in fact. And they meant his career at the highest level was over at 29, and he would tragically be dead at 49. Before alcoholism took hold of him, Grincher was one of the finest dribblers the game has ever known who treated World Cup finals like kickabouts in the park. His official retirement came in 1973, aged 39, but he had been a long way off his best for some time by then. 1974. Dennis Law. The first of Manchester United's holy trinity to call it a day, Dennis Law did so after a single season back at United's local rivals, Manchester City. The only Scot to win the Ballon d'Or, Law was a world-class centre-forward, and he probably had a couple more years left in him when he retired at 34. 1975. Karl-Heinz Schnellinger. Primarily a left-back but equally brilliant as a sweeper, centre-back or holding midfielder, Karl-Heinz Schnellinger was a star of the West German side who spent the majority of his career playing in Italy. He made three World Cup semi-finals with Germany and won a European Cup with AC Milan in 1969. 1976. Gigi Riva. One of a number of great Italian centre forwards we have seen over the years, Gigi Riva was a fantastic athlete. His strength, power and accurate finishing made him a nightmare to play against, and he inspired Cagliari to their only ever Serie A title in 1970, as well as bagging 35 goals from 42 caps for the Azzurri. 1977. Pelle. I don't think there's too much we have to say about this one. Pelé retired in 1977, which means Pelé is the best player, to retire in 1977. If you've heard any nonsense about Pelé not being one of the greatest footballers to have ever lived, please do search Pelé and HITC 7s for some clarity on the matter. 1978. Gordon Banks. The stiff competition for 1978 as Gordon Banks just sees off Italian great Jacinto Facchetti and Serbia's greatest ever player, Dragan Jaic. Banks was a brilliant goalkeeper who won the FIFA World Goalkeeper of the Year award a record six times. He initially retired through injury in 1973, but came back for a season in 1977-78 with Fort Lauderdale Strikers. 1979. Eusebio. The great Eusebio may be the most unplayable centre forward of all time at his very best. He averaged better than a goal a game over his 14 year stay at Benfica and retired in 1979 with the New Jersey Americans. He later played for the Buffalo Stallions in 1980, but since that was indoor football, it doesn't count by my criteria. 1980. Bobby Charlton. 
Similar to Mario Kaluna in many respects, Bobby Charlton was just a natural born footballer who operated in the middle of the park, could run for days, and made everything look so easy. I think he's the greatest footballer in the history of the English national team and in the history of Manchester United, so the 1966 Ballon d'Or winner takes it for 1980. 1981. Gerd Muller. Gerd Muller almost certainly doesn't get the recognition he deserves in discussions about the greatest strikers and players of the 20th century. In terms of striking instincts, anticipation, and accuracy when striking a ball on goal, there have been few finer than Der Bomber, who scored 563 goals in 605 games for Bayern Munich and 68 goals from 62 caps for West Germany. 1982. Carlos Alberto Torres. Like a lot of stars of the 1960s and 70s, Carlos Alberto Torres hung up his boots in the USA. A fantastic attacking fullback who scored one of the all-time great World Cup goals in the 1970 final, Alberto Torres was Brazil's captain and was adored by the Brazilian people. He retired age 38 with the New York Cosmos. 1983. Franz Beckenbauer. Arguably the two finest central defenders of all time retired in 1983, namely Franz Beckenbauer and Bobby Moore. If you can call Beckenbauer a central defender, that is, since he started his career in midfield and went on to become the greatest sweeper in the history of the sport. He too ended his career with the New York Cosmos. 1984. Johan Cruyff. George Best is bitterly unfortunate to miss out as he is seen off by a man who he was likened to for so much of his career. Best and Cruyff were both wonderful individuals, majestic dribblers, and players capable of winning games on their own. Cruyff was a little less self-destructive though, and ultimately, he had the more impressive career. He retired in 1984, having just won the Dutch Footballer of the Year award at Feyenoord. 1985. Kevin Keegan. A two-time Ballon d'Or winner in 1978 and 1979, Kevin Keegan still had a good few years in the tank when he retired aged 34. Best known for his time with Liverpool and Hamburg, Keegan had been absolutely sensational in his two seasons at Newcastle prior to retiring. 1986. Rude Kroll. If I was drawing up an all-time 11, Rude Kroll would never be too far off. Smart, athletic, and technically brilliant, he could play in a variety of positions, but most typically left-back or sweeper. A star of the great Dutch side of the 1970s, Kroll retired in 1986 while starring for Cannes. 1987. Michel Platini. Michel Platini came in at number 10 in my list of the greatest footballers to have ever lived, which is pretty apt since he is maybe the finest pure number 10 of all time. Platini was a world-class playmaker who made scoring goals and creating goals look easy. He was second only to Diego Maradona in terms of the greatest players of the 1980s, and it's surprising in many respects that he retired at the age of 32. 1988. Gaetano Scherrer. Italy have had so many great defenders and sweepers and centre-backs in particular that Gaetano Scherrer can sometimes be overlooked. Fewer than 15 defenders made my list of the 100 greatest footballers of all time though, and Scherrer was one of them. An elegant and intelligent footballer who never looked flustered, Scherrer retired in 1988 and he made Juventus' all-time 11 in 2007. 1989. Socrates. A footballing intellectual and a global icon of cool following the 1982 World Cup, Socrates was a master playmaker with first-class vision, technique and way of pass. He played his best football for Corinthians, also starred for Botafogo and Fiorentina. Socrates technically came out of retirement in 2004 to play a few minutes for Garth of Town, but the level he played at was too low to alter his inclusion here. 1990. Kenny Dalglish Liverpool legend Kenny Dalglish's playing days really ended in 1987, but he didn't technically retire until 1990 when he was 39, played just a handful of games for the Reds over that three-year period. Dalglish was the perfect foil for any goalgetter, and Ian Rush was the lucky man who got to play alongside him as Liverpool dominated English and European football for a number of years. 1991. Johan Nieskens the other Johan, as he is cruelly sometimes referred to, Johan Nieskens, was a truly sensational footballer in his own right. His tremendous engine was a recurring theme of Ajax, Barcelona, and the Netherlands play during the 1970s, and I must admit, I had no idea that he played into the 1990s, albeit only just. He last played for Zug in Switzerland in 1991, aged 39. 1992. Eric Heretz. 
often considered Belgium's greatest ever player up until this current crop came along, Eric Heretz, was a terrific right back with iron lungs, best known for his stints at Standard Liège and PSV. He retired at PSV in 1992, aged 38. 1993, Antonin Penenka. Best known for one thing, and that is the Penenka penalty, since adopted by the likes of Lionel Messi, Andrea Perlo and Zinedine Zidane, Antonin Penenka was much more than a dinked effort from 12 yards. Having said that, the class and composure of that finish under such high pressure circumstances did rather sum up the playmaker as a player. He retired in 1993 at the age of 44. 1994. Zico. Zico is a special player who isn't always given the recognition he so thoroughly deserves, and you can count the number of attacking midfielders who are better than him on one hand. A flawless technician, a creative genius, and one of the two greatest free kick takers of all time, Zico played his best football for Flamengo but still tore up Syria in his 30s. He retired in Japan where he inspired a whole generation of footballers on the Asian continent. 1995. Marco Van Basten. Two Dutch greats from the AC Milan Hall of Fame retired in 1995, namely Marco Van Basten and Frank Rijkaard. Both all-time greats, but Van Basten's retirement was really tinged with sadness. He was only 30 and gave up on any hopes of making a comeback to the sport he'd given so much to after more than two years out of the game. At his best, Van Basten was the complete centre forward, athletic, elegant and lethal in front of goal. 1996. Rudy Voller An incredibly prolific goalscorer, German legend Rudy Voller bagged 257 goals in 542 games for the likes of Werder Bremen, Roma and Marseille, in addition to 47 goals from 90 caps for West Germany. He retired in 1996 at Bayer Leverkusen. 1997. Diego Maradona The finest forward and the finest defender of the 1980s both retired in 1997, namely Diego Maradona and Franco Baresi. Baresi is unfortunate, but obviously it's Maradona who takes it. Perhaps the most naturally gifted footballer to have ever laced up a pair of boots, Maradona may have been prone to the old self-destruction, but he was just a force of nature at his best. 1998. Michael Laudrup He may not have been quite as explosive, but Michael Laudrup wasn't far off Diego Maradona in terms of technique. When the number 10 fancied it, he was irresistible, and had he been a little more ruthless and consistent, he could well enter discussions about the greatest players of all time. There could be no doubt, however, that he was the best player to retire in 1998. 1999. Giuseppe Bergomi Almost 10 years on from Gaetano Schurri's retirement, Giuseppe Bergomi is a player held in similar esteem in Italy, despite having an entirely different approach to the game. Bergomi was powerful, athletic, aggressive, and absolutely relentless in his duties. Bergomi would probably struggle with the protection players get in the modern game, but he was one of the best defenders in the world throughout the 1980s and 90s, and retired as a one-club man at Inter Milan in 1999. 2000. Lothar Mateus. A footballer who seemed unmoved by time, Lothar Mateus just kept getting better and better as the years passed by, and he even won the German Footballer of the Year award in 1999, aged 38. He retired a year later, following a brief stint with MLS side Metro Stars. 2001. Georgi Hadji Worshipped like a god in Romania, Georgi Hadji was a similar player to Diego Maradona in many respects. He was slightly stocky, he was explosive, hot-headed, brilliant on the ball, and forever capable of a moment of pure magic. He is Romania's greatest ever player, and he was still a top-class player when he retired with Galatasaray in 2001. 2002. Paolo Sousa There are a couple of years in the 2000s where I strongly suspect that despite my extensive research, some of you may be able to do better. My best shout for 2002 is Paolo Sousa, who was a brilliant defence midfield player and was a member of Portugal's 2002 World Cup squad in the same year in which he retired. 2003. Peter Schmeichel Lots of very good players retired in 2003, but not finer in my view than Peter Schmeichel. One of the outstanding goalkeepers of the modern era, Schmeichel is best known for his exploits at Old Trafford, but like Dennis Law, he retired at local rivals Man City. 2004. Roberto Baggio One of world football's outstanding players during the 1990s, Roberto Baggio lit up the 1994 World Cup before blazing his penalty over the bar in the final. He starred for the likes of Juventus and AC Milan, but retired after four years with Brescia in 2004, aged 37. 2005. Gabriel Batistuta. 
The ninth highest scorer in Serie A history, and the second highest in the history of the Argentina national team, behind only Lionel Messi, Gabriel Batistuta, was nicknamed Batagol for good reason. The Fiorentina and Roma legend retired in 2005 at Al Arabi in Qatar with crippling ankle pains, and although he's since undergone surgery, he still struggles to walk today. 2006. Zinedine Zidane. 2006 was a really strong year for retirees I discovered during the course of my research, but none finer than Zinedine Zidane. Zizou was famously dismissed in his last ever match, the 2006 World Cup final, but he proved in that tournament they still had at least two more good years left in him. 2007. Yapstan. A brilliant centre back and the only player, as far as I know, that Sir Alex Ferguson ever admitted that he was wrong to sell, Yap Stam, was a man mountain at the back who combined real athleticism with a supreme reading of the game and good technique. He retired in 2007 after a final season at Ajax. 2008. Cafu. One of the greatest right backs of all time, Cafu began his career in the 1980s and almost made it into the 2010s. Even when he did retire at the age of 38, he was still an absolute workhorse down the right flank with real pace and a phenomenal engine. He is Brazil's most capped player of all time and he retired at AC Milan. 2009, Romario. 2009 is a little bit of an unusual one since both Paolo Maldini and Pavel Nedved retired while still being top class footballers that year. Meanwhile, a 43 year old Romario made a brief return to football following a couple of years out. Nevertheless, that isn't the criteria, and Romario is among the finest strikers the sport has ever seen. Maldini runs him close, but Romario was a special footballer. Quick, skillful, cunning, and utterly devastating in the penalty area. He averaged better than a goal a game at times, and he takes it for 2009. 2010. Roy Mackay. I said there were two years where I struggled, and this is the other one. Make no mistake, Roy Mackay was one of the most prolific strikers of his generation and is a former European Golden Boot winner, but I just get that nagging feeling I've missed someone even better. I'm sure you'll all tell me who in the comments, if I have. 2011. Ronaldo. Ronaldo Luis Nazario de Lima retired in 2011, aged 34, having scored 35 goals in 69 games for Corinthians. His relatively early retirement was brought on by the crippling injuries that had blighted his career intense pain, and hypothyroidism. Nevertheless, he goes down as one of the 10 greatest footballers to have ever lived, as far as I'm concerned. 2012. Andrei Shevchenko. Ukrainian legend Andrei Shevchenko was absolutely lethal at his best, and he scored 342 goals in 704 games, mostly for Dynamo Kiev and AC Milan. It was with the former that Shevchenko quit football in 2012, aged 35, to focus on a career in politics. 2013. Paul Scholes. I was spoiled for choice in 2013, but I think Paul Scholes is the pick of the bunch. A world-class central midfielder who adapted his game brilliantly as the years went by, Scholes left a lasting impression on all those who played with or against him. He initially retired in 2011, but came back during the midst of an injury crisis in 2012 and retired along with Sir Alex Ferguson in 2013. 2014. Thierry Henry. The greatest player of the Premier League era, in my opinion, Thierry Henry, was just majestic for a seven and a half year period at Arsenal. He had searing pace, phenomenal link-up play, quick feet, brilliant movement, and a sharp eye for goal. He retired in 2014 after four years with New York Red Bulls in the MLS. 2015, Rio Ferdinand. We're closing in on the end of this video now, so a big pat on the back to those of you who haven't skipped a single second. We go from the best player of the Premier League era for 2014 to the best defender for 2015, as Rio Ferdinand ended his career after a single disappointing season at QPR in 2015. Ferdinand was a class act who could do it all, and he won it all during his 14 years at Manchester United. 2016. Frank Lampard. Maybe the most dreaded decision in this whole video, Frank Lampard and Steven Gerrard both retired in 2016, which brings up two-thirds of that dreaded lampard gerrard skulls conundrum, which always leaves certain sections of supporters feeling aggrieved. Gerrard and Lampard were both absolutely unbelievable servants to their respective clubs and world-class midfielders for a decade or more. Gerrard was far more complete and more of a talisman at Anfield, but Lampard's record is just outrageous. He scored over 80 goals more than Gerrard and also topped the Premier League assist charts three times. It's a tight call and both were brilliant, but I'd edge towards Lampard if pushed.
2017. Andrea Perlo. 2016 and 2017 were the two trickiest years in this video, not to find good candidates, but to pick an outstanding winner from them. Andrea Perlo and Philip Lahm were the two in 2017, and both were excellent over a really long period of time. Lahm was among the finest fullbacks of his generation, and Perlo was a fantastic central midfielder and later a world-class deep line playmaker. I'm a huge admirer of both, but my heart just says Perlo. 2018. Ronaldinho. Even though he played his last professional game in 2015, Ronaldinho didn't officially announce his retirement from football until 2018. Like a lot of talented Brazilians, and fair players in particular, Ronaldinho's career sort of seemed to fall away a bit quite early on. In the early to mid 2000s, he was an absolute joy to watch, making a mockery of world class defenders and scoring and creating goals at will. He then supposedly fell into a bit of a party lifestyle, and that was reflected on the pitch. His final club was Fluminense, and Ronaldinho's brother announced his retirement in January 2018. 2019. Xavi. The year we are currently in has seen some really top class players retire. In fact, we've even done a video on just that topic, but none finer than Xavi. The Spaniard was a once-in-a-generation footballer who not only starred for, but epitomised a Barcelona side that was for a long stretch of time pretty much untouchable. Xavi's intelligence and awareness on a football pitch was almost without peer, and he ended his illustrious playing career at Al Sad this summer. Right, well, I guess that's it then, although an interesting exercise might be to comment with who you think will be the best player to retire in 2020. Obviously, thank you all for watching. If you want to reward the hours upon hours upon hours of time I put into this video, a like costs nothing, nor does subscribing and turning on notifications. And if you're a big fan of the channel, one suspects you may enjoy my book, which can be found at www.englandsgreatestdefender.com.